Hello and welcome to Linear Programming. Today you're going to need your notes. You're going to need to listen with audio because sometimes I only tell you you need to write this definition down. You don't have to write down the whole page. Sometimes you do. So listening with audio is going to be important if you want to know what you need to write down and what you don't need to write down. Okay, so what is linear programming? Linear programming is a mathematical tool for maximizing or minimizing a quantity, usually a profit or a cost production. So maximizing our profit. Businesses that maximize their profit make more money than businesses that don't maximize their profit. Businesses that minimize the cost of how they have to make something also makes more money than people that don't minimize their cost. So this is a really important tool in the business world. It's subject to certain constraints or limitations or restrictions. So if we have, we only have a certain amount of stuff, we only have a certain amount of material, we can't make however, many mu however much we want. If we only have a certain amount of people working for us, we can't expect them to make a million pairs of shoes a day. So we have certain constraints that come along with linear programming. And we'll talk more about this when I do the example in a minute. Make sure you write this whole page down. Most of the mathematical decisions made by management of businesses involve linear programming. I would say 90% of them. It's a very important tool in making sure that you can make money. This is a fairly new topic. It was developed around the time of World War II. World War II, the Great Depression, people wanted to make money. They wanted to start making money and they needed to minimize their cost. And so this is when it was developed. And most math was developed many, 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 many years ago uh, when the Babylonians were around. So we're talking, this is, this is a very new, new math. And it's used in, as I said, business, economics, manufacturing and producing things, planning, business management. Good businesses use this to make a good amount of money. So we're going to set up a problem here. We have a potter, and you do not need to write this down, but you need to listen and pay attention to what's going on, and there will be a few things I need to have you write down, so please pay attention. A potter wants to make and sell serving bowls and plates. The bowls use 5 pounds of clay, the plates use 4 pounds of clay, and the potter has 40 pounds of clay. He wants to make at least four bowls. So he wants to, you know, probably find out how many he should make of everything so that he could maximize how much he's going to make, his profit, because he probably wants to make the most amount of money he can make. So he says, let's X be the number of bowls that he makes and Y be the number of plates he makes. Well, he has to talk about his constraints because he doesn't know how many of each unless we talk about the limitations. Well, one of the limitations that he has is that a bowl uses five pounds of clay plus a plate uses four pounds of clay, but this guy, he only has 40 pounds of clay. So he, when he makes his constraints, he's going to use inequalities because he can only make as much as the 40 pounds of clay will allow him. That's a limitation. We don't have more than 40 pounds of clay, so we have to say less than or equal to 40. He wants to make at least four bowls. So there's another constraint. There's another limitation. So his x value, his x needs to be greater than or equal to 4 because he wants to make at least 4, not anything less than that. His y can be anything, but it has to be greater than 0 because we wouldn't make a negative bowl or a negative plate. So he wants to make at least no plates or more. So that's where I get y is greater than or equal to zero because we're talking about real world. We're usually talking about quadrant one where we have positive, positive. With these, we can create a graph with a feasible region. And you're going to see that now on the next slide here. So we took those equations 
and we graph them like a systems of e inequalities, just like you did yesterday in class. We took the systems of inequalities and we graphed and we shaded and we found the region in which the shading overlapped. So if I take the first line, 5x plus 4y is less than 40, and I graph it, I will get a graph that looks like that. Well then, if I graph x is greater than 4, there's my x is greater than 4. And if I graph y is greater than or equal to 0, there's my y is greater than or equal to 0. And what we would do is we would shade the yellow line. We would shade the black line. And we would shade the red line. And what we would do is we would find out where those shading overlapped. And that would be called, write this definition down, a feasible region. It's the region which consists of all the possible solutions for all your constraints. It's the intersection of all the shading. That's the feasible region. Okay, so make sure that you write that definition down. Now, but really what we're doing in linear programming is we're trying to maximize our profit or minimize our cost. In this case, the potter is trying to maximize his profit. So the big question is, how can he maximize his profit? What if he knows the profit on a clay bowl is $35 and the profit on a clay plate is $30? Well, he could write a profit equation. And that profit equation would be P equals 35X plus 30Y. So every bowl he makes he makes $35, and every plate he makes, he makes $30. So he wants to find out how many of each he should make, and that would give him, and if he sells them, he would make the most money he could make. All right, so the corner point principle. Which point is optimal? Any point in feasible region will satisfy it. Every one of them in this region will satisfy those three those three inequalities okay but which one will maximize my profit so you need to write down what the corner point principle is the corner point principle is in linear programming pro problems that maximal that have the maximal value for profit always corresponds with a corner point okay so I'm looking for the corner point so it's really important when you graph these linear inequalities that you graph nice straight lines because I'm going to find my corner points oh there's one corner point four comma zero is a corner point 8 comma 0 is a corner point. That's where those lines intersect. 4, 5 is a corner point. And so these are all my corner points, and one of them will maximize my profit. Okay, so what we do now is we take our corner point principle, and we take our profit equation, which is P equals 35X plus 30Y, and we plug in those corner points and find out which one is going to give us the maximum profit. So at corner 4 comma 0, we plug in 4 in for our X, 0 in for our Y, and at that corner point, we will get a profit of $140. At 8 comma 0, we plug in that value and we will get a profit of $280. Well now we're going to plug in the last corner point which is 4, 5 and you will notice that if we make 4 clay bowls and 5 clay plates we will make a profit of $290, of course, if we sell them, which 
if you're a good business person and you know what sells, the selling will come naturally. It's what do I need to make to make the profit? So the corner point four five is the optimal point. It is the point that will maximize our profit. Now, if we were talking about minimizing pro minimizing cost, we would want the one that gives us the least amount of money. In this case, we are talking about maximizing profit, so we do want the one that's the highest. But if we were ever to do a problem where we wanted to minimize the profit, we would want to use the one that would give us the lowest amount of money. So this is linear programming. Linear programming is really important in the business world. So I hope that you wrote down some of those things that I asked you to write down. And tomorrow we will put this linear programming into action during class.